our conversation with the chairman of the Cannabis Control Commission here in Massachusetts, Steve Hoffman. And Steve, uh, there's significant legislation up on Beacon Hill right now that's pending that would divert a portion of the revenue stream from pot sales mm -hmm. to create a fund for entrepreneurs who otherwise can't break into the cannabis industry uh, because in part one major reason is that banks are prohibited from lending because of the federal law uh, against this. Um, who will be able to access this fund? Is it strictly for people of color? And what are the issues surrounding uh, passage of this? Well, I mean, first of all, you know, the legislation is still in process. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful that the legislature has taken this issue up. It's now sitting in the Ways and Means Committee of both chambers. And, of course, you know, who knows whether it'll pass and how it'll change. So, uh, you know, um, I don't know what the final outcome will be. Um, that being said, the explicit objective of, of that part of the legislation, there's other pieces that are really important as well, but the explicit objective of that part is to help, as I mentioned before, um, um, uh, those disproportionately harmed by marijuana prohibition. And so certainly includes people of color, but, but there are people of all kinds that, that are in these communities that have been harmed and that we are legislatively mandated to help get into this industry that, as you pointed out, just don't have access to uh, traditional sources of capital. What you really need is for the feds to step into the 21st century and change the laws that prohibit access to capital, I, it, right? I think that would be great, but I don't think it's sufficient. Um, a lot of people are trying to help don't have a lot of resources. And even if banks were allowed to um, uh, lend into the industry, it's not clear that people are trying to help would qualify mm -hmm. for bank loans. Um, you know, many of them have you know, very little net worth, don't have a lot of work experience. And so I think we need to supplement whatever the banks might or might not do. We need to supplement that with public support, with state support. I'm also convinced that if the state steps up and creates this kind of fund, that private industry will supplement it. Um, there are a lot of people in this industry. Every applicant is required to tell us how they're going to support diversity and inclusion. And I think if the state takes the first step here, you'll see a lot of the private companies step up as well, and I think that'd be great. Has the, the growth of the industry met expectations here? I mean, there was a lot of concerns initially from advocates mm -hmm. for legalization that the tax rates that the right. state agreed on were too high. It was mm -hmm. prohibitive. You're not going to be able to compete with the black market. And right. again, doing my homework here, I read a, a, a column by one industry analyst who wrote that uh, the Massachusetts recreational market has not grown as fast as we expected. Is that true? Um, I really wasn't, I, I've never forecasted this because it's impossible. We, we can only give out licenses to people that apply. I have no idea how many okay. people can apply. Um, so I don't know that I have a comment about versus expectations. I will tell you that, you know, since the first doors opened in November 2018, there's been more than $2.5 billion of retail sales, um, and that translates into over $500 million of tax revenue for the cities and the state. Um, I will tell you that this year, you know, uh, we'll do uh, one, $1.3 billion to $1.5 billion. Um, we have 200-plus retail stores open in the state. We have 370 in total, if you include cultivation and manufacturing and all the other forms of licenses. So I, I, you know, I, I think the industry is growing pretty healthily, and I think we've got you know a long ways to go. I don't think we're at maturity yet. So, you know, how many more waiting for approval? Well, if you look dispensers? at our queue, if you look at our queue, it's, it's pretty high. So we have, yeah. I said, we have uh, 200 plus that are open. Um, if you look at our queue and look at people that have final licenses but are not yet open or provisional licenses, it's equal or greater than that number. So uh, we, I, I, I don't know if we're halfway there, but we, we've got a long ways to go before this industry is mature. So boom times still ahead? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things we're monitoring is, you know, right now prices are pretty high in Massachusetts, and part of it is because there's not enough cultivation capacity. Part of it is, as I mentioned before, it's very expensive to grow in Massachusetts right. because of the climate. Um, so um, prices are high now. One of the things we're, we're looking at is as the industry matures, as more cultivation comes on board, um, what's going to happen to prices? And so I, I boom times, I'm not sure, but certainly continued growth and health of the industry, I'm, I'm pretty confident but about. But not the dystopian apocalypse that Dick Kevin in uh, that attack ad I'll, predicted. I'll let, I'll let others form that judgment uh, from my perspective. As I said, it's been a, a pretty yeah. smooth rollout. I'm very proud of it. Steve, good to have you here. Same here. Thank you very much.